Today, we're taking an inside look at the health of our cattle breeding stock using ultrasound technology and the help of our friend, Clay Nash. Clay is an ultrasound technician, specializing in reproductive consulting for livestock. Clay is here at Heifer Ranch to help us determine which heifers will remain in our breeding stock based on the quality of their biological characteristics. This process allows us to continually improve our herd. Keep watching to see what we learn about our cattle from today's scans. Let's get started. Hey everybody, my name is Donna Kilpatrick. I'm the ranch manager and land steward here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. We're doing something super cool with our cows today. What we're going to be looking for is the animal's back fat, um, the size of the ribeye, and also the marbling within the meat. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're grading on the hoof. So the reason that we want to do this um, is to have the highest quality mama cow herd we can get. So we want to retain the best heifers in the group to become breeding stock. Each year after calving season ends, we evaluate the performance of our heifers in terms of breeding. A heifer is a young female cow who has not yet had a calf, but has the potential to become a mother cow in our breeding program. The goal is to keep the best mothers in our breeding stock because their positive characteristics are passed on to their calves. The female calves eventually join our breeding stock and the male calves eventually join our herd of steers, which we raise as grass-fed and finished beef. Steers are male cows raised specifically for beef production. The better the mother's genes, the better the calves' genes, and the better our breeding stock and steer herd become. It's possible to evaluate the cows based on pure observation and record keeping by asking questions like, how much does this cow weigh? And what is her frame score? Is she docile? These are all factors in determining whether a mother cow serves our breeding operation well. But this year we decided to go deeper, examining the biological makeup of our heifers through ultrasound technology. And what we're doing is we're looking at our heifer herd um, so these are two-year-olds and what we're doing is we're going to send them through the chute and then Clay Nash who's joining us today He's actually going to use an ultrasound scanner to look at three different areas of the heifer um, To determine if we want to keep that heifer to continue uh, put it in our breeding herd um, So the things that he'll be looking for The cows are really mooing uh, the things that he'll be looking for are back fat uh, he'll be looking at the ribeye size um, and then also the marbling within the meat. That's just one tool amongst others um, that we use to determine if we want to keep that heifer in the program or if we want to find another market for it. This morning, our livestock team arrived early at the north side of Heifer Ranch, where our breeding stock lives, to move the cattle from pasture to the corral, where we'll be conducting the ultrasound scans. Cattle whisperers Donna and Lizzie arrived at 6.30 a.m. before the summer heat to begin moving, corralling, and sorting the cattle. Because we're focusing on scanning heifers today, we had to separate the females from the rest of the herd which we did using low stress animal handling techniques to funnel all the females into one chamber of the corral. During this time, we sorted out the cattle that we already knew we wanted to cull or remove from our breeding stock. We also herded cows with injuries or illnesses that needed special medical attention into a separate corral chamber, almost like a sick pen. Isolating these few cows allows us to better observe their issues, prevent illnesses from spreading, and more easily treat their injuries. Once all the cattle were sorted into their correct areas, we're able to get started with the scanning process. In order to get a closer look at each cow's physical characteristics, we invited Clay Nash to Heifer Ranch. Hey, my name's Clay Nash. I'm an ultrasound technician. Today I'm at Heifer USA, uh, ultrasounding some uh, replacement heifers here on the ranch. And uh, we'll be using the uh, BIA Pro Plus software from Designer Jeans up in Harrison, Arkansas. 
With all the cattle sorted and ready to go, we set up Clay's equipment near our cattle chute and weighing system. We use a prefert squeeze chute, head gate, weight platform, and true test scale. Today, we'll record cattle weights in addition to Clay's measurements to ensure we maintain thorough and regular records. Our livestock team moved the female cows from a large section of the corral into the working chute, which lines up the cattle to be loaded into the squeeze chute, where they'll be weighed, scanned, and then released. Using low-stress animal handling techniques like calling and patting, we got the cows lined up and ready for their ultrasound scans. When it's time to weigh a cow, Donna opens the rear gate, encouraging the cow to step into the squeeze chute. She closes the rear gate behind the cow, then opens the head gate, located in front of the cow's head. Operating the head gate requires skill and good timing, but Donna's a pro. She then pulls down the squeeze mechanism, which holds the cow still, while another member of the team records the cow's weight and ear tag number. Once that data is recorded, Clay begins the ultrasound scan. We take our image between the 12th and 13th rib. We're grading it right where they would uh, split the carcass at the plant, and that's where, uh, if they have ultrasound at the big plants, they can use that as well. As Clay scans the cow between the 12th and 13th rib, his software generates an ultrasound image and a set of numerical scores, which are recorded and sent to us in a spreadsheet. These scores help us determine whether this heifer has the potential to produce healthy steers that will yield high-quality meat once processed. As we view these scores, it's important to remember that our goal is not necessarily to hit the target scores with these young heifers, but to measure their potential to yield calves that will eventually hit those target ranges in our steer program. We're aiming to keep our five best heifers from this group here at the ranch, then sell the remaining heifers to other ranchers raising high-quality South Pole cattle. Now, let's start scanning. The first image that we have is a ribeye, a cross-section of the ribeye, just like it's laying on a plate there. The first uh, data collected is uh, the size of the ribeye, the next image, the weight, and we have the ribeye per hundred weight. All this comes from this cross-section of the ribeye here. The size of the ribeye is also called the REA, or ribeye area. According to the University of Arkansas's Division of Agriculture Extension, the ideal ribeye area score for a steer is between 11 and 15 square inches. Heifer number 9020, whose data we're examining now, has a ribeye area score of 8.97 square inches, which is a very good score for a young heifer. Our heifer's REA scores varied greatly, from 10.46 square inches down to 4.68 square inches, with an average REA of 7.49 square inches. Our weights varied greatly as well, with our largest heifer, number 9020, weighing in at 768 pounds. When taken together, these two scores create a new number, ribeye area per hundredweight. The word hundredweight is a common term in beef processing that refers to each 100 pounds of a cow's total weight at the time of processing. For example, heifer number 9020's weight of 768 pounds is equivalent to 7.68 hundredweight. Ribeye area per hundredweight is calculated exactly the way it sounds, by dividing the ribeye area score by the hundredweight score. Heifer number 9020's REA score of 8.97 divided by her hundred weight of 7.68 equals 1.17, her ribeye area per hundred weight score. The target range for steers is between 1.6 and 1.9, so this heifer's genes make her a good candidate for inclusion in our breeding stock. <laughs> There's one other important score to consider when assessing the ribeye. And the next number collected is a ribeye ratio, or the shape of that ribeye. You kind of want a P-shaped ribeye. The higher the shape score, the more tendency to retail cuts you get out of that animal. Just because it has a big ribeye doesn't necessarily mean it's going to yield. Clay is exactly right. While we can spot some trends in the data, each score gives us different information about the heifers, and we have to consider all of the scores holistically before making a final decision about who stays in our breeding stock. Keep watching to hear how Donna makes her selections. But for now, back to Clay. The next is the back fat, which is the little blue squiggly lines there. 
Back fat is a measure of external fat thickness on a cow, and it is the most important determinant of retail yield for processing. The target range for our steers is 0.2 to 0.5 inches, but these young heifers had an average of 0.1 inches. Heifer number 9020 had the highest back fat score with 0.17 inches, meaning her calves will inherit that positive characteristic. Related to back fat is intramuscular fat, which is more commonly referred to as marbling. The IMF score measures the flex of fat within the muscle tissue and factors into the subjective tenderness score that Clay gives each cow, so stay tuned to hear him explain the other factors. With an IMF score of 3.59, heifer number 9020 ranked at the higher end on marbling. Our average IMF score was 2.57. All these are genetic traits. You can breed for that. They've either got it or they don't. It's just a sorting tool, but you can use this data to help sort and keep your best animals and then market the rest. The other thing that's uh, subjective, I guess, that I do is I give it a tenderness score and a stress score. The stress score, you can kind of see on this animal, it's a little bit of black right in here. So she could have been stressed a little ways back with all the rain and stuff that we had here. but under a good plane of nutrition, she should come back to that. But it affects the intermuscular fat there. Another one is the tenderness score. We give it a tenderness score. Uh, we look at the angles of the muscle fibers, the, uh, the density of the connective tissue, and the cross-linking of collagens. You don't see any real steep angles in there. You see it flat, and there's not a lot of ropes or seams in there, or gristles, that's not in there. So that would give you a lot better dining experience than it's something that had you know, ropes or gristle or angles in there as well. Though these scores may seem a bit overwhelming at first, the records are incredibly valuable in determining which heifers stay here at the north side of Heifer Ranch to continue as breeding stock. When the scanning process is completed and the final spreadsheet is compiled, Donna will analyze the data to determine our five best heifers, which will stay in our breeding stock. Our best heifers are ones that have high scores in at least four of the eight categories that Clay scans for, have remarkably high weights for their age, and have favorable dispositions, which will be passed on to their offspring. Those who don't make it into the highly exclusive Heifer USA breeding stock will be sold to other ranchers raising high-quality South Pole cattle. But before we make those big decisions, we have to scan the rest of these heifers. With all the data compiled, Donna has selected the five best heifers to add to our breeding stock. We're happy to report that heifer 9020, whose data we've been analyzing, has made the cut and will remain here at Heifer Ranch along with four other high-scoring heifers. The remaining 24 heifers, whose scores were slightly lower, will be available for sale soon. Though these heifers were slightly outranked by others in their herd, they're still very high-quality animals who would make great additions to any South Pole herd. In fact, many of the cattle in our current breeding stock were purchased from another rancher's sale and have proven incredibly valuable to our operation. If you're interested in purchasing one of the remaining heifers for your breeding stock, please reach out to us at heiferusa at heifer.org. Now that the scanning process is complete, we'll open the corral and move the herd back to the pasture where they'll be grazing today. All in all, scanning the entire heifer stock took just over an hour and provided us with an additional tool to greatly improve our breeding stock. If you'd like to have your own herd scanned, you can find Clay Nash's contact information in the description below. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us today at Heifer Ranch in Perryville. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed the process of watching us scan our cattle. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel. See you next time.